I'm reading Metaphor, The Universal Civilizations. The book is The Only Planet of Choice, Essential Briefings from Deep Space. Transceiver Phyllis V. Chetzlemmer, edited by Mary Bennett. Uh, this is uh, page 34. Uh, it is a communication between a group of people and uh, Phyllis Schlemmer, who is in France and transcribing, transcribing, uh, transcribing the uh, words of a collective. Uh, the collective speaks uh, as Tom. The Universal Civilizations. In the mid-90s, it would at first appear that there is perhaps a greater acceptance of the idea that we are not alone. However, while more people are prepared to acknowledge the subject, when faced with a crop lift, anonymous lights in the sky, or an account of a close encounter with an extraterrestrial, a glazed look comes into some people's eyes. We could call this the shutters-down phenomenon. As if the conceptual envelope of that person had been stretched to a maximum and the safety mechanism ordered a stop Government and defence organisations continue to ignore the subject publicly, while rumours abound concerning official interaction with ET, and various alleged ex-government employees publish books while implying that they are under pressure to desist. This chapter explores some of the civilizations mentioned by Tom, and it is well to remember that he does not always mean this word lit literally. He has been known to allude to the civilization in terms of consciousness. Please read on with a flexible brain. Tom also points out that each planetary civilization has, in its midst or around it, a spirit plane, or numerous spirit planes. Also, that there is a difference between aeons and those of the spirit planes. Tom. The Council of Nine has asked that I, the spokesman Tom, explain a little to you of the structure and relationships in the universe. We are nine that exist independently and exist in wholeness. In the universe, in a place that you could identify as the zone of cold. We are not physical as you are physical, or as Althea or Huva are physical. And this again is not the same manner as yours, but it is also physical. If need be, we may manifest, but we are pure energy. Together we oversee, and I, Tom, relate all that we wish to convey to the planet Earth from the Council of Nine, of which I am one. In relationship to us, there are 24 physical civilizations in another dimensional realm. Each is a total collective consciousness that oversees from these civilizations. Physical beings have incarnated upon your planet Earth and at times has intervened, have intervened where necessary. These physical civilizations, the 24, each in its own dimension are total and complete <clears throat> are total and complete units of one collective consciousness that have agreed to be in that collective consciousness. They have evolved to that form of action to oversee, to pass through information of great importance and help other physical civilizations in their evolutionary process. An example would be the civilization of Althea. As we are in another realm of existence, we depend upon Altia for communicating with you. They guard the body of our being while you are in communication with us, and they provide the technology for us to communicate. Altia was also the head of what you know as the physical civilization that manifested upon planet Earth as Atlantis. There are other civilizations, and there are amongst you incarnate souls from these civilizations who have come to help planet Earth. One of these civilizations, Hoover, H-O-O-V-A, was a civilization that originally seeded planet Earth, as did some of the others, but Hoover reseeded planet Earth on three occasions. Hoover is the first civilization from which the Hebrews derive, hence the importance of the Hebrews. Hoover is the civilization that brought forth the Nazarene. Jean, this is Jean Rodenberry of Star Trek. Jean, I understand that the Nine are not physical entities, but do I understand correctly that those of Hoover and Altea and other civilizations are physical beings? Tom, they are physical civilizations, but not in the same dimension as planet Earth. They also have physical limitations, but not to the extent of those on Earth. Andrew, 
Could you amplify that and indicate which dimension, for example, who will exist in? Tom, when you speak of dimension, Andrew, I mean fourth, fifth, sixth, for example. We live in a fourth dimensional world, height, breadth, depth and time in our physical world. Tom, we understand the, dif we understand the difference, okay. as you would call dimensions, but in truth, they are not dimensions. Andrew, well, when it was explained to me before, dimensions were said to consist of various velocity envelopes. Tom, yes, speed. Andrew, right, and relative to the speed of light, what is the speed of Hubert? Tom, I'm consulting. Altia is giving us his numbers. Yes, Altia has said it is not exactly a dimension, but it would be 50, 56 times the speed of light as you know it on Earth. Jean Rosenberry, thank you. What about the rest of our galaxy and the universe? Are any of the visitors we seem to get on Earth coming from there? Tom, there are those within your galaxy that are not within what you would call dimensions of your Earth, but those that come to benefit planet Earth come from galaxies not within your galaxy. Altia, for example, is what you might call 50 million light years away. John, but from our perspective on Earth, these other civilizations like Altia or Huva could in a sense be existing in or around us and we would not perceive them? Tom, they are in a different frequency reality because of the speeds. John, but you talk of them as existing close or far from us in terms at all. Tom, if you are asking in the terms of the physical planet Earth and you are asking about a length or space of time, it would be a great distance. They are not of this galaxy. John, and we would not be able to see them even if we were there, where they are, in our present condition, would we? Tom, in the dimension in which you are, you would not be able to see them with your eyes, if you were able to transport yourself to that area. But they can come to reach you within your area. Tom, uh, John, but they experience themselves as physical. They experience themselves as physical, even though we wouldn't experience them as physical. Tom, in the dimension in which they have existed, they have a similar sense of physicalness that you have within this area in which you exist. But they are not physical in the sense that you know on planet Earth. John, and is it true to say that there are several dimensions between us and yourselves, for example? Tom, that would be an understatement. There are many. Jean Rodenberg, are there any civilizations or races within your galaxy visiting us at, at present? This is in the 90s. Tom, yes, there are civilizations of different dimensions different intelligence, different evolving, that are working with the 24 civilizations. These are those within your galaxy that are in service to those that are attempting to salvage planet Earth. But they are not the primaries, the 24. Jean, if the Alti, the Hovits and others were to visit Earth, would they be in the same physical body as they are in their own dimension? Tom. When those of Altia manifest upon Earth, they have a similarity of appearance to those that exist upon the planet Earth. They have a higher rate of vibration, but they may also bring it into the rate of vibration which is correct for the planet Earth. There are others, such as those of the civilizations of Ashan, who do not look like the people of planet Earth. Should this civilization land on Earth, those that would appear in the beginning will have similar appearance to those of the planet. Of the planet Earth. Should the civilizations land on Earth, those that would appear in the beginning will have similar appearances to those of the planet Earth, or they will manifest manners of Earth people, such as Hoover has done. Those of other civilizations that follow would come in the form which they have. We wish to reassure you that those who exist on planet Earth will find that those visitors that do not have what you call beauty will have within them the essence of beauty. There will be many appearances. A diversity of appearances, yes? Years later, the following exchange brought out another perspective on the physicality of the beings of the universal civilizations. John, do civilizations like Altia and others of the 24 exist on a physical planet that is in our understanding of physical? We know that they have formed in their own space-time envelope, but do they have a physical planet we could locate in our time and space? Tom. You mean, does it have density? John, 
does it have the same density as us? John, Tom, you can have the same density as planet Earth. Oh, right. So it wouldn't be recognizable from planet Earth in that sense? Tom, you do not have to have a telescope if you do not have a telescope large enough. It is not anywhere in the closeness of planet Earth. Jo John, but even if it were, it wouldn't be seen by our physical means. It would be detected by means perhaps underdeveloped yet on Earth. Is that correct, Tom? No, not correct. If a device were designed that could see to the furthermost reaches of the universe, then you would see also different levels of density. Within their civilizations, the 24 have attained perfection, unity of oneness, complete obedience to the Creator. So therefore they understand their physical world and are not tricked. You know that this place you sit upon is made of billions of trillions of molecules. Is that not so? You do see that, therefore you would think it doesn't exist like that, yes? If you were to see the civilization Altea, you would see it in physical, in movement. John, so it has form, but a kind of form we could not comprehend because we do not have experience of that form in our lives. Tom, it is physical. It has evolved to the point where the physical and spiritual are in harmony and balance. And that is what you must achieve so you can enter with the 24. John. Now, when the 24 interact with our solar system, I believe you said once that they may use other physical planets as a way of stepping down towards us. So there may be a physical planet in our solar system that are used for individual civilizations? Tom. Not by the 24, by sub-civilizations. The 24 have no need. Gene Rodenberry. There's a question that I cannot avoid asking. Why you do not give strong and definite signs of your existence or of pro proximity on top of approaching humanity by indirect means, such as these channelings or other ways? Obviously you have your reason, but this question does matter to me. Tom, it is of great importance for you to understand that the governments of your world of Earth have refused to believe or to convey to the people our existence. If there were an attempt by the civilization to land upon Earth in a mass situation, which in truth will come to pass in the course of time, the people upon planet Earth would panic. For they have not the understanding, the knowledge, that we would mean no harm to them. Remember this, there are also certain civilizations, not of the 24 or their civilizations, that have a great desire to control Earth, to keep souls in bondage. And these civilizations have landed at times upon planet Earth and have created difficulties, which they forced upon the people of Earth. It is important that there is no panic amongst those that exist on the planet Earth. The knowledge be brought to them in gentleness, that those of the 24 civilizations mean no harm to them. This is of great importance, for, their, for their were, if there were panic, humans may then attempt to end their own lives and also the lives of their families and neighbours, which not would serve any purpose. The governments of your world have refused to accept that there are others of a higher intelligence, <clears throat> and in truth of a more spiritual intelligence than those, than those that exist upon the earth. We need to convey to the people We need to convey to the people that there are others that mean them no harm, but have an interest in saving planet. For in truth, if there are no other civilizations to help planet Earth, it will, dis it will bring destruction to itself. We do not come to control, we do not come to hold in bondage. We c will come with love and patience and understanding. But there is the denial of our existence. How can those of planet Earth accept the fact that the civilizations of Altea, Huva, Ashan and the rest of the 24 mean well? Jean, I have another question. 
that I think people will wonder about. On previous tapes of your conversation, I heard you explain that you constantly know the thoughts of either all of us or those who communicate with you. Am I correct in this assumption? Tom, if we have the wish to help you, yes. But we wish you to understand that we do not invade the mind. We do not control the will. We do not interfere with freedom. We do not interfere. It would not be of service. Altia, Huva, Ashan and Argon have asked to convey to you that they may have the abilities within them, but it would not benefit planet Earth to use them, nor would it benefit them. That would be an evasion, invasion of the soul. Jean, I have been most impressed by the communication, the expressions and atmosphere of love and peace that surround all the people here, but I do have some difficulties in understanding why. If you are in the minds of people, and humans at times, and your representatives have visited Earth, and you have a knowledge of human affairs. I find it difficult to understand how you have difficulty in speaking with us and understanding our basic colloquial English. Could you help me with that? Tom, we will explain that. The civilizations have indeed visited Earth, but do you understand that when you have communication with your mind, it is not necessary to have words? It is difficult from where we are to give explanations in your words. We have concepts that cannot be explained in your language, for you do not have the words to explain. If you could read our mind, if we could communicate with your mind in the essence of pure telepathy, then we could convey to you that we are trying to transmit. Also within the mind of the channel, as also within your mind, there is only a certain vocabulary that we can use. Jean. Thank you. You mentioned that at some stage there might be a large-scale landing of the civilization. I think the next questions involve who and where and how and why. The first such question most people would ask is how? In other words, what method of transportation would be used in such landing? Are we referring to physical vehicles? Tom. Yes, they would be in the nature of what you would call a physical vehicle. If you have the desire to go and touch it, as you have with an automobile, you would be able to touch it. Jean, can you tell me anything about the relative size and shape and so on? Will they hold a large number of people or... Tom, there would be vehicles of different sizes and different designs. There would be some with the appearance of a glass top, but it is not in truth a top. It will just have its appearance. There will also be those that will remain in your atmosphere that are very large, that will then send out smaller ones. You have upon your oceans carriers that send out ships that fly, is that not so? Jean, that's correct. Tom, it would be similar, but instead of being upon your oceans, it will be in your sky. Jean, you're saying that smaller craft will exist and come down to earth on this carrier craft? Tom, yes, there will also be those that have the appearance of what you call saucers. There will be those that have a, have a pointed as with a V. Ooh, they hijacked this. Jean, we will, will these vehicles pass through the time dimension or other dimension in order to arrive here on Earth? Tom, the intelligence that exists in the civilizations have the ability to come into your dimension. They have that technology, yes. Jean, a very common Earth question would be, how these vehicles are powered? By what method? Tom, it resembles the reversal of a spinning top. Jean, would these vehicles remain on Earth after such a landing and would humans be permitted to inspect them? Tom. They would have permission to visit the interior. The craft would remain for a good time. Not a great length of time. Not for years, for example. Jean. Because of many stories we have flying saucers, people will be interested to know if humans could be permitted to travel in any of these vehicles. Tom. It would be necessary before they could travel in a vehicle to have a vehicle around them. Jean. Does this mean that the atmosphere within your vehicles will be different or that the street stress of the movement would be dangerous? Tom, the stress of the movement. It would be possible to move within your Earth atmosphere, but to take them out would require another vehicle inside a vehicle. But it could be done. Jean, landings would undoubtedly be judged by humans and governments in a variety of ways, which includes the almost certainty that some would view your landing as a threat. 
Do you have a method of defending yourself from attack? Tom. We wish you to know that we are talking about the civilizations, not us, the Council of Rome. We do not need to manifest in the physical. There would be a method to stop people from attempting to destroy those of the civilizations. It would be done with love and gentleness. Those of the civilizations that are in service to us will not attempt to destroy nor harm in any manner any physical being on earth. We have a way of preventing them from attempting to destroy us. But we would wish not to come without giving some prior knowledge, for otherwise people would begin to believe that we would seek to control them. We have not the desire nor the need to control. We come here only to benefit. If an Altean were to appear at an entrance of this vehicle and were stepping onto planet Earth, and if there were a group that attempted to destroy that Altean, he has only to hold out his hand in an upright manner and not in great extension to bring calmness and also to render them into a state in which they would not have the desire to harm and would put down their weapon. Hovik would operate in a different manner. If they were in the same situation and they came out and raised their hands, those humans with weapons would become totally stationary for a period of time. So there are different methods. But none of these methods would harm a physical being. Do you understand? Jean Roddenberry. Yes, I understand, and I certainly understand why you would not want to land showing force. Because this would create great fear. Tom, yes. Jean, can you describe the one from the civilizations who have something like human shape? Something as to their size and color and features and so on? Tom, Altians have the tallness of you. The color of their eyes is a shade of blue as that of a clear sky. They have a translucent appearance. They are very fair in their colouring. They are very they are in erectness. When we say translucent, it is that their vibra vibration is of translucent. Do you understand? Jean, no, I'm afraid I don't quite understand that. Tom, people upon planet Earth have different sizes. Do you not? Those of Althea have one size. They have a glowing that gives them uh, the appearance of being translucent. It is their vibration. They have a silverness about them. You have automobiles that have a translucent appearance. They say, I'm using the wrong term. It is an iridescent appearance. Andrew, do they have any hair on them? Tom, no. Jean, other than the hairlessness and iridescence, is the spacing of their feature like ours? Tom, they are similar in appearance to those that exist upon the physical planet Earth. Do you understand that the physical humans seen upon the planet Earth came from Altea? Jean, it is my understanding that there are some of us here on Earth who are of Altean blood? Tom, yes. Jean, all genetic features? Tom, yes. Jean, mixed with our basic Earth features? Tom, yes. The Hobbits are smaller. They manifest small and dark of skin, not as fair as the Alteans. They have the hair straightness of hair. It is also dark, yes. Jean, and are there other features again, like nose, mouth, eyes, hands, and so on, earth-like? Tom, yes, those of Achan are not. Tom, may I just say, do any of these have vocal cords at all? Do they make sounds? Tom, Altians do not. Hobbits have vocal ability, but not similar to you on planet Earth. Andrew, how long does an average Hobbit live for, for example? Tom. If we placed it in your Earth time, it would be in the realms of 500,000 to 1,000 to 1 million 500,000 of your years. Jean, <laughs> are you saying they would live at least half a million years? Tom, that would be in relation to your time. Their time is not the same as your time goes. In great slowness, because of your density, it's slow here. Jean, I see. You spoke of hobbits who have vocal cords. Will they speak earth language so that we may communicate with them? Tom, they have the ability to connect, to convert. Hobbits have a method of speaking which will be transmitted, while Athenians will have it in a computer box so that what they think will come out as sound. Jean, while talking of those that are humanoid, 
will they be male or female as we recognize the sexes here? Tom, Altians are of two polarities, blended in togetherness. They do not have what you would call male and female. The, there are tripolarities. There are tripolarities in Hobbits. Jean, yes, I'm acquainted with the possibilities of three genders. If that's what you're trying to say, and I believe you're describing the Altians as an unisexual race, is that correct? Tom, yes, that is correct. It is of interest to note here an incident that occurred several years earlier when Phyllis was waiting for a client who had an appointment for a reading at three o'clock at her school in Orlando. At ten to three, she checked with her secretary, who, t who told her that her client was a woman named Mary, in fact a regular, who was always on time. Seated in the reception area was a stranger, a dark man about five feet six inches high. He was wearing a dark suit and looked Italian or Jewish, except that, according to Phyllis, he had almost al almond-shaped eyes. The stranger said to her, I want to see you at three. Phyllis explained that she had a client at that time, to which she replied, she won't be here. Phyllis returned to her office to wait for Mary, who still hadn't turned up by, then, by ten past three. Phyllis wondered how the stranger had known that her client was a woman. She returned to the reception area and asked him this, and also how he had known that she would not show up. He told her that Mary's car had stalled on the parkway Intrigued, Phyllis invited him into her office and asked him what he wanted. I want, you give, I want you to give me a reading, he replied. Phyllis touched his hand and in an instant she knew that he was not from Earth. She told him her impressions. He said, that's right, give me a reading anyway. Phyllis said, this isn't why you came, is it? Why did you? He said, you've been asking for science since 1953. Phyllis thought that she would test him and say, if you are who you say you are, then bring in one of your people. She had scarcely spoken the words when a being materialized before her eyes. It was about six foot four inches, well built with blonde hair and blue eyes and was wearing a silver blue sunstrom jumpsuit. <laughs> he didn't speak, he communicated telepathically that his name was Altima, that he and others were coming to help the planet and that in future she would be able to call on him in any emergency. He remained in the office for less than five minutes and then dematerialized. The dark man left and Phyllis watched from her window as he got into a white Cadillac with Miami numbers and drove away. One Friday afternoon about two months later, just as Phyllis was about to leave and go home, he suddenly appeared, reappeared, put his hand around the door and said, Hi Phyllis, everything okay? Just checking on you. While this story can seem to be preposterous, Phyllis remembers the incident vividly and swears that this is precisely what happened. Further questions. Jean, how would we be able to explain to people and to our scientists how people from varying dimensions have so similar a humanoid form? Tom, men made those of the civilization civilizations into their gods. When they have their saying that man was created in the likeness of God, that referred to the civilization that had that appearance. Planet Earth does not, however, have the independent capacity to develop human-type beings on them. Altians have, as we explained earlier, a manifestation that appears to be very similar to yours. They also have the ability to manifest in different manners, but they would have I will ask Altia how she would choose to appear. Altia has said that they would choose to appear in their usual form, which is what you would call humanoid. Hoobits have that appearance. Ashans do not. Zenials do not. Jean, did the Altians and Hovens, as well as others, evolve in the way that we evolved? Where they planted their seeds, and did they evolve somehow on the planet naturally? With the geography and atmosphere and all of that. Tom. Not in terms of atmosphere and geography, but they did go through a process of evolution. But they perhaps had a more fortunate manner in what they were not trapped, in that they were not trapped. Although, as you are aware, there were some from the civilizations of Altia that were of Atlantis. Remember 
that Earth is the planet of balance, to learn to balance the ethereal with the physical. That was trapped many of the souls. That was what trapped many of the souls. When you speak about planet Earth evolving, remember this, that all the souls that exist in the universe have had, at one time or another, the necessity to manifest on the physical planet Earth for the lessons to be learned. So those that have existed upon Altea have also lived at least one of their lives upon planet Earth. It gets very complicated trying to explain that when you have not the words to explain the concept of the universe. I'm sorry they are saying I'm not explaining it right. Souls with a desire or necessity to learn balance do come to live on planet Earth, do understand how to refine the physical in relation to the spiritual. Many Altians, the greater majority, have lived on Earth. That is why they have a great wish to help Earth. They are the 24 civilizations that are in direct service to us. They are in truth 12 of two. The 24 civilizations are also physical. At this present time, the civilizations are working with each other to move into balance and to resolve all residues of difficulty. Because the 24 are in the form of physicalness, they also have some of the difficulty associated with physicalness. They also have some of the Difficulties, yeah, so not to the extent of the earth, but nevertheless to the degree that they have. If they have reached perfection, they would have merged with us. Among the 24 civilizations, not all have manifested upon the physical earth. There are those that have seeded planet earth, but there are also those that have not. Those, such as those that have been to earth, but have not been involved with the work of the other civilizations. Each of those civilizations, in particular those involved with planet Earth and those that have not yet evolved with it, but have sent a representative, need to be brought into balance. Okay. What is Ramta? I-M-T-H-A. Why does Ramta speak so definitely about September 1988? Tom. Why was it said that the end would world that the end would come in 1914 and again in the 1950s. The different civilizations have different meanings of un measures of understanding. Let me explain. The members of the council are not and have never been in physical form. There are 24 civilizations that are in physical form. And then there are what we would call helper civilizations that are in more physicalness than the 24. Example. Altea is a civilization of the 24. That civilization has brought one being. In other words, it is a collective consciousness of a very high caliber and is of millions of souls that support, create and survive with each other. They know all in their location and in their knowledge. They in turn have underneath them other civilizations that you would term workers or helpers of. We do not wish to use the term sub-civilization, but there are those that filter down. Now, if humans on planet Earth have communication with a helper or a lesser civilization that does not understand the workings of all, then they are liable to receive misinterpretation. Example, in a corporation there's the chairman of the board, there's the board of directors, and there are the departments within all the corporation. The department of purchase does not need to understand the department of selling and the department of management knows more than both departments of purchase and selling. So if one communicates with one department within their realm of understanding, they can speak on, but outside their realm, they do not understand. They can hold views which are valid only within their term of reference. What that means is this. Perhaps there is a communicating be being in a civilization who sees that if the planet continues upon its present path, the Earth, then it can bring about destruction. What that being does not see is the ability for humankind to change. To change that. Planet Earth is unique in the universe, for upon this planet Earth there is freedom of will. Okay. It is generally understood esoterically that the four etheric subplanes of the cosmic plane can be 
the highest possible spiritual influences as far as humanity is concerned. I'd like to know if that is correct. Tom, you have received this information from one of the civilizations, you understand? Yes. I thought this was generally esoterically understood and that it was coming from the channeling of Aleph Bailey, which I thought was... Tom, you understand that that was not from us. It was from one of the civilizations. You understand that the 24 civilizations are the highest of all beings in the physical, that they are next to us. But you also understand that information is from a physical civilization. John. Yes, could you say which of the civilizations it can, came from? Tom, I will ask permission. It is the partner civilization of Myrex, M-Y-R-E-X, called Myratrion. It is not necessary to explain all the 24. It is best to speak of Hoover, Ashan, Atia, and Aragon. Andrew, can we clearly state at this time that the civilization of Hoover is that which identified in the Bible. Tom, Hoover is Jehovah, yes. Andrew, and as far as Altia is concerned, can we, Tom, it was from the time of Atlantis and before. Andrew, right. And Ashan, can you give us some historical reference for Ashan's role in the past? Tom, Ashan was the beginning of the great composers, the Renaissance, the greatness of art upon the planet Earth. It began in small portions in the time of Egypt, in its working with gold and in its beauty of architectural environment. Ashan is simply a civilization of great creativity. It has brought to the planet Earth great music, great art and great literature. Yes. Remember, there will be those who have great difficulty in accepting this. There will be no difficulty from heads of governments or security servers of governments for they will publicly pretend that this does not exist while quietly they will send people to find out for they know they need communication andrew what would you suggest is the principal reason that you are coming here to help mankind and what is the primary problem of man that needs help tom the council has said to explain it in a twofold manner that if it continues in the manner which is now, this is the 90s, around or after your year 2000, planet Earth will no longer be able to exist as it is now. So the civilizations are attempting to cleanse it and to bring it back into balance by using their technology, not only for the saving of those that exist on Earth, but also because Earth is under the guidance of the civilizations that initially colonized it and it is thus partly their responsibility. Then there is the entrapment and the recycling of souls. The necessity of coming at this time is because man, in his dominion over animals and flowers and plants, is now trying to control all of humanity, and we cannot have that. In the following transmission, Tom announces the presence of other beings. Tom. With us today, we have individuals that are observing what is transpiring. They are in service or in study to us. We are preparing them to go and do the work and perform the service that is necessary for this planet to raise its level of vibration, to evolve, in order to help this universe. Andrew. Well, we welcome their presence and I hope we can be of some of use in their education. Tom. They are beings from civilizations other than yours. John. Could you clarify what you mean in this case? Tom, when we speak of civilizations, we speak of levels of consciousness in order to raise the level of this planet Earth, by which that also raises the level of the universe. There are many different beings and civilizations that must learn to work in peace and harmony. As you have many millions of plants on your planet and many millions of species of animals, also in the universe, there are many. Those that observe us on this day are observing the technique and at the same time, we are trying to show them the way to generate love and peace and harmony. They are observing the vibration of love. John, could you perhaps explain what happened when these people came in? Tom, these beings from space, from other di different system, systems, became curious. Our primary concern is with the Earth, because it is important to raise its level, since it is holding back some of the evolution in the universe. 
But, as you know in your world too, at times, inquisitive beings can create a problem. At times it is better to tell them a little, and that is what we are doing, although we've had a conference of many of the major groups and civilizations. This is a seer. It is our affair to help raise those from other different civilizations, other levels also. John, are any of these inquisitive ones with you now? Tom, no, these are their leaders. Andrew, could we enter into an exercise with you to help show them the evolution or the awakening of love? Tom, they are observing this because when we bring you peace and love, we put a band around you and we link that band with us. It is a vibration that is also an electrical band. This is the only way I can describe it. There are very tiny atoms that link you with us. They are not molecules, they are atoms. I was told to clarify that. Andrew, what is interesting? We didn't know that. John, I'm interested to know whether that can exist in a feeling of some level. In a feeling of some level. Um, Tom, the chair that you're sitting on is tangible. This is not a tangible product. It is a vibration. It is what you would imagine an emotion to feel like. John, we always feel good in our sessions with you. And I imagine that is our experience. That is your emotions. You cannot explain this easily. It does not exist in your world. But what this generates to you is love and peace. The two words, love and peace, mean the same in our world as in your world. But the vibration or feeling is experienced differently. It gives you peace. With peace you can then love, and love is necessary for the evolutions of all beings on this planet. It is also necessary for raising the level of consciousness and the collective consciousness of this universe. When you are serene and peaceful, peaceful within, and know in which direction you must go, and you are solid in your convictions, this helps these beings who are observing. These other beings are obse observing the vibration of your commitment. It does not generate a vibration, and in their observing this, then they in turn can tell, in the case of those with whom they are working, whether they are truthful or absolute in their conviction and in their commitment, or if it is just desire or ego. Ian. Roughly, what proportion of our society is open to the possibility of existence of intelligent beings from space? Tom, it fluctuates between, in your developed world, would 68 to 71% believe. John, now that there is a change underway, this is 1991, is there a likelihood of any direct content, contact with the civilizations? Tom. When it is transformed, there would be no reason not to, would there? John, that's true. Tom, part of the transformation will be a greeting of each other. Hmm, that would be nice. Tom, however, no in fullness. Also, there are others than ours. Tom, uh, Andrew, is it possible for you to give us a brief idea of where the Atheans come from in terms of distance, the size of their planet, the atmosphere, what special problems do they have entering our atmosphere? Just so that we have a thumbnail sketch of their characteristics. Tom, as you know, we come from a zone of cold. The area of Althea is on the fringe of the area of cold. It has no sun, as you have a sun. We speak of dimensions, Andrew. Yes, it is a large planet, or is it a small planet? Is it a large planet, or is it a small planet? For example, I was told that Hoover was 16,000 times the size of Earth. What is the size of their planet relative to the Earth? Tom, 52 times the size of Earth, yes. Andrew, now the reason I ask these questions is, we were thinking about how the Hoovits and the Atlanteans would adapt to the Earth's atmosphere if they landed here. And it seems to me both would have to undergo considerable transformation in order to enter our atmosphere. Then, by the same token, Phyllis told us that she had the feeling that particular people could be physically transported one of these days to either of these two planets in order to communicate and so on. Tom, 
the transport would not be to the planet, it would be to a vehicle. And to aha, so we would be dealing with our own atmosphere in the vehicle. Tom, yes. Andrew, I see. And we would not, not have to undergo major transformation in order to enter their zone? Tom, no. John, we don't know whether a civilization might only be ten souls or it might be many souls. Can you give us general idea about that? Tom, within Althea, as stated in your Bible, there is a figure of 144,000 who were, would be within the realm of five million. Ah, and those civilizations, are they what we would call eternal? I mean, do they last indefinitely in terms of our earth time? Tom, if you lived a million years in earth time, you would feel you were eternal. Is that not so? John, yes. Tom, then we would say it is eternal. John, okay, I understand that. Tom, Atia, we will say to you, is eternal. A Hobbit would live approximately one million of your years. The civilization of Hoover, is that what one brought forth the nation of the Hebrews? They came to planet Earth for this in, this in the time of summer when Abraham came. They came to planet Earth for this in the time of summer, S-U-M-E-R, when Abraham came. And at the time when it is said in your books about the sons of the gods merging with the daughters of the earth. And they came one another time, and they came one another time also, as they were the one civilization that had sustained energy and were determined to survive. They elected to play a central historical role on planet Earth. Their descendants represent a microcosm on Earth. Ashan communicates through the artistic. You understand that those of Ashan are not always capable of discipline? May we just say to you that for millions of Hovid, there are only a handful of Ashan. They come through their own, by their own means. They are not of creativity. They are of creativity. If you look into the culture of the Chinese, you will see the effects of their influence. Ashan is the creator of music. It is the creator of the beauty upon the earth. It is the civilization that created music. The Scandinavians were of Ashan, as were the Phoenicians. John. They were very artistic with glass, I understand. Tom, yes, they were bohemians. Ashan is a life of body and light as the wind and a sounding of crystal. Do you understand? Yes, that's very graphic. Tom, they are what you would call, they are what you would call the surrealists of the universe, involved particularly with Earth. You have Hoover, Ashan and Altia. John, yes, Hoover works with the physical? Tom, yes. John, and the astral, the creative, the emotional, is Ashan? Tom, yes. And Althea works with the mental. It's the blending of the three primaries, Althea, Hoover and Ashan, which bring together the connection and the coupling of planet Earth with the universe. All involved with Aaron, Jose Aguil, the Brazilian healer, for example, are involved in healing. It's different from Angkor. Angkor works under Aragon. They work in conjunction towards perfecting the health of humankind. They work together, as Spectra works for Hoover. Zanil represents a similar principle to a computer, but not just like a computer. We know not how to express it. Zanil works with interplay, interchange. Zemd and Sethor are worker civilizations of Zanil. They give a specialized structure of understanding and ability in the bringing forth of the energy of Zanil. Zanil is light and joyful and orderly. When we say orderly, we mean the creating of order in the color energy. Zanil is the alchemist of the civilization. This chapter finishes with an, ex with an exchange between Irene and Tom concerning civilization on this planet. Irene, I want to ask about the Chinese and the Buddhist Tibetan, Tibetans. How far back does this unhappy relationship go? What needs to be understood about it? And what is there that is not known in humankind's history about it? Tom. In the beginning, China was one seeding and the Tibetans were direct descendants from another civilization, which was the soul of the Chinese. You know the importance of bringing forth the material with the spiritual? The Chinese represent the material. I mean, symbolically, 
Tom, yes. And the Tibetan represents the turtle. I mean, but somewhere in the history of China and Tibet, they used the Tibetan Lamas to teach the Chinese emperor their spiritual teachings. And yet even before that, there was some imbalance that is still playing itself out now. Tom, you know that the priests of Tibet are in a direct relationship to what is called in the nation of Israel, the sons and of gods and the sons of gods merging with the daughters of men. Dan, so at which point is the evolution of man, at which point in the evolution of man did the Tibetans appear and begin, begin ming mingling? Tom, they were teachers. As Ionis came out of the sea to teach those of Ur, they were the teachers to teach the Chinese. Do you understand? Now China wishes to consume Tibet. Tibet, for in the consuming, they believe they know best. So the Chinese unconsciously felt that they should have had the divinity that the Tibetans had. That is correct. But they did not have the ability. I mean, so knowing they lacked the ability, they sought to remove the Tibetans from sight. In more peaceful times, they made them their teachers, thinking that if they learned better, then their teachers, they would assume the place of divinity. Tom, that is exact. As in ancient times, the Bedouins ate the purpoise, thinking they would receive it as knowledge. Irene, okay, when the Chinese say that this transfer didn't happen, they turn towards violence? Tom, and bondage, for then, if they could bondage this soul knowledge, then they could own it control it. Do you understand? It is similar with the Jewish people who hold a valuable place in the matrix, matrix which others would take from them. Ian, so which of the civilizations did the Tibetans come from? Tom, it is one of the 24. Ian, it, which one of the 24? Tom, I will ask permission to tell you the name. They are peoples that represent in the universe the principle of humility. They are of the civilization that, in total togetherness, are the principle of inner knowledge. Not for expansion of self, but for... S now in this time, they are, the, they are the only peoples, apart from the Hobbits, who have inherent knowledge of their purpose as a collective in their coding. That is why they are cohesive. And why now, in this time, in this time, when the twenty-four are emerging, they are expressing themselves in their humanness, for they understand that they can bring to an end the elimination of threatened human groups. John, could you give us the name of the civilization? Tom. Dot dot dot. Irene, I understand your apprehension. I know it takes Buddh it takes Buddhists and Lamas many, many years of studying and transformation to be able to obtain their knowledge. But I do think it's important. Tom, you have brought the Council of Nine into a wrangle. Irene, I understand that the Council might think this is a shortcut to people's commitment of faith and spirituality. Tom, that is correct. We choose not to tell you at this time. We apologize. End of chapter four. Next one will be chapter five, visitations. It's rather, um, it's long sentences. I can't help that. It was transmitted by Phyllis, Phyllis 40 years ago, so I'm just reading it. 